Well, hello and welcome back to our after party. I am so thrilled with the feedback that we're getting. Really keep the tweets coming, the Facebook, the emails. Um, Lara and Terry, Lara from LaraTouch.com. She's getting some great feedback on your website as well. And Terry from TerryCole.com. You guys are loving these girls as much as I do and that really makes me happy. So, keep watching. Um, this week's episode, yeah, a lot going on. Some hair pulling, some drink throwing. You know, we could sit here for hours and talk about that scene, um, which maybe we'll cover at a future after party. But right now, let's talk about my scene and what I'm going through this episode. And that's basically my messed up love life. <laughs> Everything from still loving the ex, <laughs> which a lot of you, I'm sure, go through those same emotions, whether it be a boyfriend, a crush, a husband. Um, you know, I think you could all relate to me in some way or another. Um, but you see me say that I'm afraid to get into a relationship because I feel like I'm so guarded it might not be like a real relationship. But, you know, although that's what I'm feeling right now, I'm starting to realize that maybe I shouldn't be so focused on a real relationship. And just because that's all I know from being mm -hmm. married to long-term relationships, um, my mind's so focused on that. So I'm starting to lighten up a little bit now, now, not back then, but back then I was just kind of focused on that and Tara, you see that a lot, don't you? I do. I have a lot of um, women in my practice who are very successful and really empowered in their um, career lives mm -hmm. and a lot of them have public lives and yet they don't feel that empowered in their love lives. And I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a phenomenon. I mean, mm -hmm. it's actually happening where you could be super successful in one area and yet be very traditional in another area, or we had talked in other um, after parties about repetition, yeah. what you've seen in family systems, yeah. and yet I want to speak to what you just said about, so Dina's talking about, I'm not ready ah, to be in a relationship, because she hasn't had a relationship where dating could just be fun, it could just be light, yeah. it could just feel good to have someone asking you questions and going out to dinner and having some romance and, and maybe dressed up pretty yes. for the night so many women like you know don't do that they feel like it's got to go right into the series but you know we worked a lot which i think you may see some on the season what we mm -hmm. worked through but it's also what you're used to based on your upbringing and your family like my mom got married at 16 to my dad who was 19 wow. and just now are celebrating their what was it celebrate? <laughs> <No. laughs> Sixty years of marriage. So all my oh, sisters, you know, long-term marriages, and that's what I know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to break out of that. Lara, what do you see in your well, groups? I have a lot of women's groups, and we work on manifesting love and great careers, and and all these things that people want that feel that they feel they have resistance to. And one of the things I find is that. There's a lot of fear about dating, and I think it's exactly because of what you're experiencing too. People feel as they have to jump right into a relationship. These days, we're really chronic, chronic relationshipers. I guess mm -hmm. you could say dating has kind of gone out the window. We very, we don't really do a lot of dating, and. I find that a lot of women in my classes are really ready to actually jump right into bed with guys on the first, second, and third date, and that can be fun, believe me, I've done it, but I have to tell you, the problem with that is as soon as we go in energetically and actually let those men inside, we're not even really breaking a physical barrier, energetically, we are now sucked in. And it's really, really hard to see the forest for the trees, and what I mean by that is, from a chemical standpoint, an energetic standpoint, you are really just now enthralled with this person. Right, and can I say something yeah, about that? Yeah, absolutely. From a psychological standpoint, so this is the same exact thing that you're saying. I always say to my clients, do not have sex too soon. Don't, you can always have sex, you can never take it back. And why do I say that? Because never I'm rude, no, I'm not. Because what happens is, the way that being sexual changes the relationship, you now are always thinking, wait, so is he drawn to me because he's interested in me, or is he drawn to me because he wants to get laid? And there's no way to undo that once you do that. So it isn't about withholding to like play games. It's really about giving the relationship, the dating part of it, a chance so that you're not in an instant relationship. How about we go out a couple of times, yeah. go to dinner and have fun. So anyway, back to what you were saying, but I just wanted to bring that up. And because you know what? When you do have that sex, it puts so much psychological pressure on the relationship, energetic pressure, and you know, First of all, you don't even know, first of all, the sex may be great, it may not be that great. But there's the also things, there's so many layers to this, because I, like I said, I am a spirit 
Gabby Bernstein will love this. I'm a spirit junkie. I read <laughs> all kinds of spiritual books, everything. I even saw that for six years after you have sex with someone, you're energetically tied to them. Absolutely. And when they have their highs and lows, like your their energy, like you're somehow connected. I, that freaked me out. I was <laughs> like, like oh, weird. I, I have to tell you, when I changed, I changed a pattern energetically that really finished this chronic pattern I had with dating, where I would find a man, I'd fall in love with him, have sex with him pretty quickly, and go on vacation with him probably within a month, um, and <laughs> then like, just do lose it. myself in this fantasy of being with him. But guys, it actually wasn't just a fantasy. It was an energetic connection that was created that I got lost in. And pulling myself away from that was pretty impossible. But I have to tell you, it freaks you out on the inside and also freaks the guy out on the inside as well because no one's really conscious and fully it's present like, to what's it's going like a subconscious on. subconscious thing that's going on and you're falling mm -hmm. deeper and deeper without even realizing it. And you may not even dig the guy at this point. Uh -huh. It's just because you're so, you're in that pattern you now. You dig the energy right? though. And the right. energy is like an addictive thing. And what's amazing is that if you really stopped and you gave yourself the chance to actually date, Guys love it because otherwise you can't create the magic. I mean, yeah. ultimately, ultimately, what men will want in the very, very beginning is to get you in bed, and it's all about getting to that point. And what about all the in-between points between that and getting into bed? There's so much magic and sexiness and juiciness and fabulous conversation that you can actually have and where you get to know each other on an intellectual level, on an energetic level, before you go there. And and there there's two better. things I want to touch on. I did a class of yours once, you know, it was basically a workout, like an affirmation workout. In the middle of it, we just stopped <laughs> down and did this one really sex vibe, you know, exercise that like got in touch with your like feminine energy and that powerful that, guess what, like what about him? He may be the biggest douchebag, and we're so worried about, like you said, if he's going to call us back or get back to, what about actually thinking, do I really like this guy? Right. Or is it just the fear, like you said, of rejection if he doesn't call you and get caught up in that? Like, I think it's time as women take it back and we get in touch with, like, that sexy beast goddess that's yes. still inside there. And <laughs> being part, part of that, though, Dean, is like, that sexy dance, which I think, are you going to give them? I'm going to give you the sexy dance. <laughs> Next week we should do the sexy so cool. dance. No, I'm kidding. We're not doing it. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> but getting empowered yeah. is really what you're talking about. Is taking back your power and not feeling like a victim, mm -hmm. not being so worried about what this other person thinks of me that you can actually think, what do I think of them? Yes. And does he deserve? Me. Yes. yes. Does he deserve the goddess within that's in there? Yeah. And this video, guys, it is so much fun. So you're going to be tracing all of your meridians, which actually gives you more energy and really helps you ground yourself in your power. And it's actually to Hey Big Spender, which is super, super fun, fun from uh, Sweet Charity, Bob Fosse style. Uh, and you just trace all your meridians. But you really, when you do it, get to feel just how gorgeous and beautiful and um, sassy you can be. And that is what turns men on. So if you can feel it within yourself and understand the qualities in the you right. that are fabulous and that That's turn like men on. That's sexier and more attractive to a man than anything else. And they don't even know what it is they that they're drawn to. Mm -hmm. Trust me. It's pretty magical. It doesn't matter what you look like. If you got that thing going on, they're yeah. going to be drawn to you, and then you get to pick who you want. Absolutely. And another thing that I actually coach my women to do is to make a list of qualities that they really want in their man. And not necessarily tall, short qualities that are going to necessarily describe what he looks like, but the qualities that they will feel you know, when they're with him, but also that he will have. Is he honest? Is he creative? And it's amazing. My husband and very is specific. Very mm -hmm. specific. Very specific. <laughs> but then when you're dating, you can actually step back and say, hey, boy, does he have those qualities? Go home and look at your list. And if he has some qualities on there that you don't necessarily like, take note. Is this the kind of guy I really want to be with? Yeah. And we did um, with Ophi from AstroSide.com last week's after party. Take a look at the manifesting video mm -hmm. that we did together. Mm -hmm. That list to make on a new moon is amazing. And uh, when I say be specific, be specific. And don't just think, do the money, looks, make you laugh. It's got to have the rest of the stuff because mm -hmm. that's, that's 
going to be there forever. And you also want to be able to grow together. That's a really important thing to put on your list. Someone who's going to give you your space to grow and grow with you instead of like owning you. That's a super important thing because you can find these guys with all this amazing quality, yeah. but you're, you'll just be another accessory of his if you don't exactly. pick up the last one. And the thing that I'm going to give you guys for this week is, um, it's like a questionnaire. I'm going to challenge you to do a 48-hour disease to please mm -hmm. experiment to really see how much of your time you're spending pleasing others and maybe not necessarily pleasing yourself. And this is just a way for you to become more empowered in all your relationships, not just romantic relationships. Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited about this week's after party because, I mean, I needed this reminder. You know, we were talking about what we were going to go over in this week's after party and it's like this is stuff I know already it's just sometimes you need to be reminded of that and while I was going through the process of separation that was so new and raw I lost a lot of that and I know a lot of you go through that too when those emotions are kind of overwhelming you forget like what it's really all about so we're here to remind you um, to get back into this practice, if you don't know about it, start now. Mm -hmm. And tapping into, like we talked about in one of our, other, of our other videos, is that divine energy inside and how powerful it is, especially for us women. So it's time we're going to take that back. Um, so there was another little part of uh, this episode that Nicole, God bless her heart, she was like, I'm going to set you up, and I told her no, and she did anyway. So I told her it was shitty to do, but you know, I'm big on intentions and people's intention of what they do. And you could watch this episode and I'll um, write more about this on my Bravo TV blog. Um, people's intentions, pay attention to what people do. And my thing is, we're all going to mess up. You know, we're all human, we're all going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But if your intention in doing something was pure and good, that karmic debt is not going to bite you in the ass. Um, so right. I think Nicole's intention was good. It was pure. She just wanted to give me a little nudge out there. But at the same time, you know, she's lucky that this wasn't like a different situation where this could have been a real trigger point for me to snap out. Right. You know? I think what you're really talking about is about boundaries and what happens when someone's heart is in the right place. You felt that way, that her heart was in the right place but she directly went against what you'd asked her to do. And I think that, that there's forgiveness, you know her heart's in the right place and that's fine, but what do you do in life if people are, you're drawing a boundary and someone's like, you don't really mean that. Yeah. I, I know better, I know better for you than yeah, you know well, they're, for you. They're not really saying that what you're saying is real, means something, it's kind of, it's not a good feeling for yourself when you ask someone to do not to do something or whatever and then they, they don't agree. It doesn't validate your feelings, mm -hmm. you know. So I I deal with this all the time in my in my classes and one of the little structures I like is that you can really set any boundary with any person right. if you do it with love and acceptance. And I'm actually gonna give you guys a little fill in the blank way to set boundaries. And it really is, you know, like in this situation, you know, I really, really appreciate you're you know, trying to help me. It's so sweet of you, and I know it comes from the bottom of your heart, and I just love you for it, but I'm just really not ready. So I would so appreciate it if you could just hold that. And I actually think you did that in the episode. I did. She but did yeah. it anyway, but I think you did do that. Yeah, I'm Nicole and I are new friends, so maybe she doesn't get when I say something I really mean it, because right. I, I, I hardly do like set boundaries like that with mm -hmm. girlfriends, especially. I'm usually so right. laid back. Oh, hi, Chula. <laughs> Hello. Dogs allowed in our after party Jewel, always. Jewel of faces. All here. kinds of animals. <laughs> um, so I think if she knew me better, like right. one of my friends who really get me, they would have known that's what I meant. Because like I usually I go with the flow, I'm laid back, but when mm -hmm. I say something, I mean it. So I think it's just a matter of her getting to know me better. But I love that you're going to give that away. You guys are getting so much free stuff here at the after party. It's <laughs> so we awesome. we love you. We love so you. That's awesome. it. <laughs> All right. Well, please come back every single week. More and more, we're going to touch on everything you could possibly imagine to grow to experience things um, on a different level and you know we're all on our path and we're here to guide you or give you a little bump you need and you mm -hmm. get to choose if you want to start it or not. Nobody's pushing you. <laughs> so that's great. All right, we will see you next week. Until then, bye Chula. Say bye. Bye. Put your hand up. Say goodbye. Bye. Chula. <laughs> <laughs>